Well, Syria may be the big story, of course, in Washington today, but this week also marks one year since the deadly attack on our U.S. consulate in Benghazi. Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans were killed when militants stormed the grounds there, and our own Chris Wallace grilled White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough yesterday as to why, despite the fact that many media outlets have interviewed a man who is believed to have been one of the ringleaders of this no, of this gee, attack, you know, and know. yet uh, no arrests have been made. Why Watch Kelly this. With it, Look, uh, we've been very clear that we will hold uh, those people who carried out this uh, dastardly, heinous attack against our people. Uh, it's to been account, a year, sir. It has been a year, and you know what the United States does, Chris? Is we track every lead until we find and can accomplish what we say we will do. But why this can't, president why has, can't we find this president has can. This president has demonstrated that, and we will do that. Hmm. Joining me now is Andy Dean, nationally syndicated radio talk show host of America Now with Andy Dean, and Richard Fowler, host of The Richard Fowler Show. Good to have you both here. Uh, Andy, what, what, what's your reaction to that exchange? I thought it was embarrassing. I mean, you have the White House Chief of Staff for a year after Benghazi, and nothing's been done. Abu Qutala, one of the responsible parties, who's a member of a Libyan branch of al-Qaeda, is hanging out talking to New York Times reporters, sipping coffee. And the same branch of al-Qaeda then went on to attack an Algerian installation and kill 39 oil workers. So they're running around North Africa, and nobody's doing anything. And I, I think there's a reason why, and that's because Barack Obama wanted this Islamic fantasy of Islamic government to take hold in North Africa, and we've all seen it's been a nightmare. Really? Rich, I, I don't know about that. You, you know, I mean, the last part, Richard, you can respond to that, but, but I, I, I want to actually stick to the, the main question here, which is why would Dennis McDonough be peeved by that question? It's a very legitimate question, Richard. Well, I think what um, the chief of staff was trying to say, and pretty clearly, is that this president has shown before that he will track down every lead until he gets his man. We saw that when he went after Osama bin Laden, and when he went after a lot of the top al-Qaeda individuals via drone attacks or via CIA co um, covert operations. So this president has always been a president that follows down every lead. And I have 100% trust in this president and our FBI to make sure that we will get to the bottom of this and solve what happened in Benghazi and bring those individuals to justice. So Andy, what it doesn't it make any sense. Uh, right. Abu Kutala, the guy responsible, is being interviewed by the New York Times. I mean, why can't we just have a member of our CIA dress up like a Western Osama reporter? Bin, Osama, and but Osama bin Laden was interviewed by Barbara Walters. There's no distinction here. What, but the president went after him, and the president got him, and that's the point. Well, that, that was obviously many years before that uh, doesn't make September any sense. 11th. But you, you know, I, right, I think that obviously. I think in a way, one of the I was surprised, frankly. It appeared that that he was surprised by the question, Dennis McDonough. And I, I can't imagine, Richard Fowler, why he would be surprised by the question. And, and there's, a, there's a feeling that, you know, pursuing this is annoying, that it shouldn't be brought up, and that you should just all be quiet and let the administration take care of it. Now, you know, if, if we all wake up tomorrow morning and they, they found these guys and they brought them in, everyone will be very happy that they were doggedly pursuing it. But the feeling, I think, that upsets people is that they don't think that's the case. They think it's been dropped, Richard. Well, I think the reason why the chief of staff was surprised had less to do with the question and more to do with the fact that he's, we've seen from conservatives on the, on the Hill that they're willing to make this big witch hunt about, that they're willing to have all these hearings and sort of do anything possible to bring this president down on this one particular issue. And I think the president of the White House is sort of saying, all right, guys, enough is enough here. Clearly, we're trying to solve this issue. Clearly, we're concerned um, that four individuals of our administration were killed. The secretary of state was concerned. You dragged Hillary Clinton down to the Hill, and now we're still talking about this? But Andy, you know, there are parallels here. You know, when, when, you, when you look at what happened in Syria and a, a chemical weapons mm. attack, and now we're, we're considering a strike in response to that chemical weapons attack, and yet, you know, you have what happened in Benghazi, and then you have this long period of time uh, of nothing. And, and I think that people want, right. you know, sort of there to be some and sort of... Martha, a, I have to ask you a question. Go ahead. Martha, how, how is it that a year later we can't find any of these people in Libya Yet we know within eight days exactly what happened in Syria. It's because there's a lack of initiative. And also, where's the follow-up reporting on what's happened to Libya two years after the NATO airstrikes? I mean, what's happened is the Muslim Brotherhood is now the second most populous party. Oil production's down by 90%, and it's one of the most violent countries on Earth. 
and, and that's the follow-up report well, on Libya. I should, I would, go ahead. I, when I you would would transition that to, to Syria, differ, what I would next to differ Syria? that Libya is the most violent country on earth, one. Number two, I think the argument that this White House is making, I think what we've seen from this is that we saw what happened in Libya, and this White House will do everything in its power to make sure that never happens again. That's why just a couple months ago, just a couple weeks ago, rather, they shut down all their embassies in the Middle East because of intelligence they received. This president has done everything in his power to protect our men and women serving abroad, and the fact that people would question that, um, Andy, is sort of, that, that makes them questionable. All right. Gentlemen? Well, you see the chief of staff a year later having no clue, and he's upset that we're asking these questions. I think... It speaks volumes about well, what's happening. Well, you know, his claim was that we all should be quiet because something, you know, they're working on it, and, and we'll see uh, if that turns right. out to be they're the case. We will definitely see if that turns out okay. to be the case because a lot of people are waiting for answers on that. Andy Dean Agreed. and Richard Fowler, thank you very much, gentlemen. Martha, thank thank you. you. We'll see you next time.